I'm gonna go to Ron Ron's comment because that was next on the rundown. Anyway, 76ers are ending James Harden trade talks. They're saying he's planning on not reporting to camp. <laughs> I'm tired of James Harden's non-playoff winning ass. I'm tired of James Harden's non-playoff winning ass too. Um, now he, you know, he, he he pretty much forced his way up out of Houston. He pretty much forced his way up out of Brooklyn. Now he's about to force his way up out of the 76ers. Um, listen, man, I, I I I guess he keeps moving because he wants to. Or at least I'm I'm hoping he keeps moving because he wants to win. I know now he's saying that he wants to go to the Clippers. I, I don't get it. Um, you already dealt with two injury prone players in Brooklyn, so I don't know why would you want to go to the Clippers to play with two more injury prone, uh, you know, superstars. But that's where he wants to go, and the rumors are he's not planning on coming to to camp. Um, and I love that the Sixers have put their foot down and, and, you know, and, and they're not budging right now either. Now, obviously at some point, somebody's going to have to, to, to make a move because once we get to that trade deadline, if James Harden is not moved, you're going to be stuck and you're not going to get anything in return because he's definitely leaving next season. Once that, once that contract is up and you will get nothing, uh, for him. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, it, I don't know, man. You're in a situation where you got Joe Allen Bede, who's who's top five play out there. The MVP you're, of the league. <laughs> you're supposed to be a top 10 player at, at least. Um, and they got a couple other pieces. I, you know, I don't know why you don't want to, you know, make that push and try to get it going and get things going in Philly. But he wants to, it seems like every time things get tough and there's no immediate win or immediate, there's no sight you know, anytime in, in, in the future looking like it's going to happen. He wants to jump ship. And that's what we're saying again right now. Well, I mean, he wants to jump ship because the biggest issue with James Harden is accountability and his lack of it. He does not want to take accountability. He does not want to be a guy who has to actually be a leader. He just wants to put up a bunch of shots. He wants to do what he wants to do on the court. And then if he plays well, Hey, we should applaud him. And if he doesn't play well, we should make excuses for him, at least according to his logic. Um, the Sixers are not going to budge on this. And we talked about this. I don't think it was last week's episode, but I believe the week before, if you go back trip, someone had access who we thought would get traded first between Harden and Dame. And I said, I thought it would be Dame because Daryl Morey's history, yeah. not only as president in, in Philly, but as GM in Houston is he will not buckle just because you want to get traded. He's going to hold out for the best possible move. And if you don't believe me, just look back to two years ago with Ben Simmons, when he literally sent Ben, ben Simmons home for half a season before they found the right trade for him. He is not going to trade James Harden just because Harden is unhappy. Harden, I guarantee you, even if he doesn't show up to camp and he does the typical James Harden, I'm going to show up overweight, then Daryl Morey will live with that. But they're not going to buckle to James Harden's request. And honestly, I think Philly might be better now because I think Maxie is ready to take on a bigger responsibility in that offense. And Maxie is ready to be the number two to, to Embiid. So James Harden to me is only hurting himself. Going to L.A., I do, I do not think solves his problems. Um, at this point in James Harden's career, he should be willing to take a backseat and allow Embiid to kind of be the driving force and he support that. But he's not willing to do that. He still wants to be viewed as the guy and somebody who is kind of, quote unquote, leading the way for his team. But I don't I don't know what he's really leading, Trip, because as you mentioned and highlighted before, he struggles in the playoffs. He's one of the worst playoff performers in terms of superstar guys that we've ever seen. Historically, he's one of the worst. So. He could sit home all he want. He could report out of shape all he want. Daryl Mar Daryl Morey is not budging on this topic. Yeah, um, I agree. So, I, and, and again, I, like I don't. Maybe maybe the Clippers is his choice because he looks at that as a bailout because they're so injury prone, and it's like uh, nobody's gonna say anything if they don't win because you know Kawhi might miss half the year. Paul George might miss half the year. Even though he said he was going to be on his bully this season, but you know history has told us that both of those guys are going to miss huge chunks of of, of seasons. Um, you know, so I don't know. All I know is I think we could. You know, can we can we put this Harden overweight talk to bed now? Because well, let's get into it. Well, let's, let's get I, into it. Let's talk about it. I th uh, it was uh, what was it? Oh man. Oh, Jeff Teague. Jeff Teague was the one. I like these football questions coming in, too. These are some really good football questions. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. Um, uh, Jeff Teague was saying that he thought 
that uh, James Harden was better than Dwayne Wade. I prefer to differ. Um, Eric, you, you you spoke in the early on in the program about how D Wade is arguably the third best shooting guard of all time. I don't hear too many people saying that James Harden is the third best shooting guard of all time. Like I, I have not, I haven't heard that narrative from anybody in any I, ESPN, Fox, and CBN. Anybody, I haven't heard that narrative from anyone that James Harden is arguably the the third best. Uh, shooting guard of all time, um. But again, I mean, it's, we're talking about Dwayne Wade. Just D Wade just went into the Hall of Fame. That that D Wade right there. Uh, again, I, I mentioned some of his accolades earlier: three time NBA champion, Finals MVP, All NBA, uh, All Defense. He's had he's had uh, as well all All Star appearances. I mean, Dwayne Wade, man. I, I don't I don't know, man. I can't I can't see him with Harden. Anybody that jumps ship every chance they get. I can't just put you over somebody who who actually is leading teams to championships. So shout out to Drunk. Drunk, this is about the fourth or fifth time you've tuned in and you've been right on point. And I think you've been stealing from my notes. So I gotta <laughs> I gotta be careful when I write out my notes in the future. But drunk makes a great point, short and sweet, right to the point. Pause. Uh if you're talking about accolades and just pure watching somebody play Harden might be better right and I, I really had to take a step back too because I, I respect Jeff Teague Jeff Teague was a good player in the league for a very long time so Jeff Teague ain't one of these guys who was a scrub in the league and now trying to critique guys he played at a very high level and was a good ball player but James Harden finished top three in the MVP voting at least three times in his career Dwayne Wade never finished that high three times in his career uh Harden's a three-time scoring champ Wade is a one-time scoring champ first team all NBA Harden has six Wade has two all-star appearances are pretty close Harden 10-time all-star Wade is 13-time all-star scoring leader you got uh Harden three times Wade was a one-time scoring leader in terms of numbers across the board Harden for his career is 24 5 and 7 Wade is 22 4 and 5 and with all that being said Dwayne Wade was still a better ball player because if you told me that my life was on the line or I needed to win this game, I'm going with Dwayne Wade because I know more times than not he's going to show up, he's going to give me the best effort, and he's probably going to find a way to win that game. James Harden has probably played with more Hall of Famers than anyone else in the league aside from maybe KD because KD is just ridiculous at this point, the amount of Hall of Famers KD has played with. <laughs> but it's a fact. But James Harden has had support everywhere he has gone, and yet – he can't even get back to the finals. And his only finals appearance was when he was the sixth man on the team with KD and Russell Westbrook. In Houston, when they gave him Dwight Howard, when they gave him Chris Paul, when they gave him Russell Westbrook, it still couldn't work. He couldn't get you to a finals. When he got to Brooklyn, he couldn't stay healthy to get you to a finals. When he got to Philly, he couldn't play well enough to get you to a finals. Dwayne Wade, no matter what, you knew when you turned on the game that night, you knew you were going to get a great performance from Dwayne Wade. And that was with the injury slowing him down and everything. Dwayne Wade was the better overall player the, the the resume might be stronger for James Harden in terms of like individual stats. But again, life on the line, you got to choose between the two. I'm sure you agree with me, and I'm sure most of the people in the comment section will agree with me. I'm taking Dwayne Wade over James Harden. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta agree with you on that one, sir. Um, I'm I'm, a, I'm about I'm about winning. I'm about winning games, I'm about winning championships. Um, I'll take I'll take 22. What you say it was? It was 22 and uh 22, 4, 4.7 uh assists, 5.4 rebounds. To 20, was it 25? You said it was 20, 24.7 points, 5.6 um rebounds, seven assists. I'll take the 22 to go along with three championships in the finals MVP over over the 25. And, and you haven't even been to the finals as as the best player on your on your team. Or even as a starter. Yep. I'll take I'll take and, I'll take any day of the week. I'm sorry. And and I always say this too, because this is why I hate the comparison of errors. James Harden played for a coach and played in an era where stylistically they treated him like an AAU star. They basically gave him the ball and said, do what you want. Mike D'Antoni would give him the ball and yep. high pick and roll all game. I don't care left side, right side, just gonna run high pick and roll all day. James Harden will hunt out fouls. We've talked about this plenty of times with Harden would live at the free throw line in a way that no other superstar has ever lived at the free throw line. You're talking about 10 plus 12 plus free throws a game. 
where you're, where you're cashing in almost half of your points from the free throw line. Dwayne Wade played in an era where he was not allowed that same flexibility. Dwayne Wade had to play off the ball a little bit more. Dwayne Wade wasn't just given the keys as the pseudo point guard the way James Harden was for the peak of his career. And I think that speaks to those MVP years where James Harden, if you look at the, his usage rate, his usage rate is historically one of the greatest ever because Dan Tony basically was saying, Harden, take the ball, do what you want. We're not even running offense. Just if you want to run pick and roll all game, Go run, pick, and roll all game for 48 minutes. I don't care. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the can. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real